Hey, what's up? This is Ben from Wad Prep, and I am here with Andy of RippedBody.com. Oh. Today, we are going to help you identify the best CrossFit diet. I'm putting that in air quotes for a reason, and you're going to find out soon. Oftentimes, when people start CrossFit, they stick to a specific dogma. Paleo, zone, lately, keto. There's a whole bunch of different diets and, frankly, fad diets that people adhere to, and they think that is the ultimate CrossFit diet. We're going to hopefully set the record more straight in this video and give you some tips to identify what the perfect diet is for you. But before we get into that, make sure you go to wadprep.com where you can download some free training resources about nutrition, about skills that you might need to master, about how to get prepared for the CrossFit Open. We have a lot of great free training material. Just click the link in the description below and you can go get it for free. So putting the fad diets aside, Let's talk about probably something that isn't talked about enough. What is your goal? Many people start CrossFit for a variety of reasons. So before we assume we know what your goal is, let's talk about maybe some common goals that you should probably think about. What are the, generally speaking, common goals of a diet? Look better naked, boom. That's pretty much it, no? And what that comes down to, generally speaking, is gaining more muscle and losing some fat. Now, some people are going to be further along the I need to lose more fat than I do gain muscle spectrum. And some people are going to need to gain more muscle more desperately than they need to lose fat right now. So one key component of um, thinking about your um, nutrition, which is supportive of your training and is permissive of the um, body that you're trying to create, is you need to think, what should I probably be doing right now? And uh, I've got some rules that I'd like to share on this. I say rules, actually guidelines that I'd like to share on this, if that's okay, which might help uh, you um, when you're deciding what to do. And can I make one point before we dive into that? No. Many of you might be saying, I'm gonna do it anyway. Many of you might be saying, I don't care about what I look like naked. I'm doing this for performance. Yeah, if you put it. And I would say either one, you're full of, what were you going to say? No, actually, um, actually like, or, uh, okay, here's a better point. The better you look naked generally means the more muscle than the leaner you'll be, so the more powerful you'll be at the same body weight, which is going to make you more competitive. That was the point I was going to make, is increasing your muscle mass, decreasing your fat, you're going to get better at CrossFit, generally speaking. Okay, now let's dive into it. So guideline one is, if you are new to CrossFit, I wouldn't worry too much about your diet right now, counting calories, thinking about your macronutrients and all the rest. I would just let the training, uh, the magic of that training happen. So a lot of people when they start working out, they find that they just naturally um, either lose or gain weight. That is really going to depend on whether you are currently overweight or if you're underweight from what your um, natural... Um, weight would be when you start training. Yes, okay, that, that's cool. So pretty much just focus on developing the habit of training and training properly. And then when you get to the next plateau, then you need to start thinking, okay, am I going to go into a um, primarily a fat loss phase or am I going to go into a bulking phase? Um, and what I would say to help you choose, I like to keep people in that 10 to 20% body fat range. Um, if you're a woman, add 8% to that, you hold more fat and men, essential fat. Um, so if you're in that 10 to 20% body fat range, if you're at the lower end, you can bulk. If you're at the higher end, you should probably cut. If you go any lower than 10%, um, it's not really beneficial for the future bulk that you're setting yourself up for. Um, and if you go any higher than 20%, then, well, it's gonna make cutting that, it's gonna make the diet afterwards um, a lot harder. Mm, painful. Um, it's also going to increase um, some, well, health risk factors. You're also going to be a lot worse at CrossFit. <laughs> this is true as well. Um, so, yeah, the, the, those are the things that I'd like you to consider. Just bear in mind that if you are um, underweight and you do undertake a gaining phase in order to put on muscle, some fat is going to come with that, and that is unavoidable. Um, don't be scared of it. Um, just know that you can cut it off later. A lot of people get themselves in a trap then of they just end up spinning their wheels because they're scared of the fat gain so they never allow themselves that calorie increase which is the next point we come on to calories um, so that they can really gain muscle because you can't 
gain muscle from nowhere. It mm. has to come from somewhere. And stealing fat that's already on your body to then go and create more muscle will only happen to a certain extent. Mm. And past a certain point, you need to go into purposeful gaining phases or fat loss phases. So if the underlying thing here, especially for those who come to me and want to gain muscle, if you want to gain muscle, hopefully get stronger, you might have to accept a little bit of fat gain. Mm. Um, ideally, we're going to make that minimal and we have lots of resources about that for you, but you just will have to kind of swallow that pill and say, I'm going to accept the fact that I'm adding a little bit of fat to my frame, to my body. And if you can accept that, then you can allow yourself to get some hopefully good muscle gains. Exactly. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, can I not do both at the same time? And the answer is yes, to an extent. Um, and with the increase in your training experience, um, your ability to do that decreases over time. Then you get to a point ultimately where can you measure the difference in um, muscle gain and fat loss that is happening or is that being lost? And if you can't, then you can't stay motivated for it. And then if you can't stay motivated for it, you, well, you stop turning up at the gym and you stop caring about your diet. So then you need to start thinking about purposefully going in a fat loss phase or purposefully going in a gaining phase. That's what we're talking about there. Okay, so for everyone who's experienced enough, you're still watching this, you realize you've maybe already cut out some of the crap from your diet. You've been doing CrossFit for a little while, but you're still not at the physique or performance physique that you're looking for. What's the next step for a more experienced trainee? What is the most important factor to change that either muscle gain or fat loss? What's the most important factor? Yeah, so if you think of it, in terms of a, a pyramid of importance. So I was fortunate to co-author a book with a guy called Eric Helms. We've written a couple of books called The Muscle and Strength, Nutrition and Training Pyramids. And the base layers on both of those are adherence. Can you keep with it? Are you enjoying it? Um, for the nutrition side of things, the next layer on that pyramid, the next foundational layer, as you go up, the least important they become, the smaller the layers become, is your caloric intake. Mm. That's your energy intake. So we're talking about energy balance here. Are you getting what you need um, or are you getting more than you need or are you getting less than you need mm. if you're getting more than you need you gain weight less than you need you lose weight if you're just about breaking even then you won't gain or lose weight cool that makes a lot of sense we're not going to dive into the calculations of those things but if you look in the description below we'll be sure to share a link where you can go read one of andy's articles where he explains exactly how he'd recommend calculating your calorie balance depending on your goals. Yeah, and actually, also we'll link in the description there, um, if you don't mind, Ben, to the article that I put out yesterday on cutting versus bulking, because sure. I've got a video guide there to what certain uh, body fat percentages look like that you might find useful if you're thinking, whoa, well, am I in the, where am I in that 10 to 20% body fat range? Sure. Um, they are all men, I'm afraid, and that's because I work with men, um, but I, I hope uh, for those male readers, you'll find that useful. Cool. All right, so let's go on to the next level. So we talked about this pyramid idea. The base was adherence. The first level of the pyramid was calories, calorie balance. What's next? What's the next most important thing? Supplements, obviously, right? <laughs> the next level. Ooh, can I do that again? Oh. The next level is... Uh, macronutrients, so uh, protein, carbohydrates, fat, and alcohol. Ooh, the fourth. I'm just kidding about alcohol, although it is technically a macronutrient. Um, so we're talking about our protein, carbohydrates, and fat. Think of your protein as what you need to build muscle, help maintain muscle, help maintain cellular functions, um, help recover from your training. Um, I'm speaking in really broad terms here, and then I want you to think of your carbohydrate and your fats as the fuel sources for your body. Um, you don't want to skew it extreme in any direction where you're very, very, very high fat or very, very, very high carb because then you'll be um, missing some of the benefits of having that balance. Um, but yeah, just think of it in that way. And this is unfortunately where a lot of the more fad diets come into play. They tend to want to skew you in one direction either way. And what we're recommending is to not do that. You need fat, you need carbs, and especially if you're training, you very much need protein. All of them are very important and can be a part of a good balanced diet. Well, carbs really help fuel performance. So as CrossFit athletes, you really want to keep some carbs in your diet. Um, 
The only the, the caveat to that I would say is if you're not really that good and you're quite considerably overweight and you find the idea of counting your calories just absolutely mind-bogglingly hard and then you, if you just decide to cut out your carbs and follow keto, I mean he's saying it's a fad diet and it's trending right now and just as paleo did in the past and it's trended 10 years ago and it trended 20 years ago and that's just how these things come in cycles but the key thing is does it work for you now some people they try it they really like it they have success with it because they find the rules around that are really easy to follow mm. so you could you could sure, sure. Right? absolutely now the vast majority will find that um having maintaining carbohydrate in your diet is going to be um best now, the reason that we have our um, macronutrient intake as a layer above the caloric intake is this. I don't want you to hear some recommendation, say for example, eat your height in centimeters in grams of, of protein, protein okay. right? Or eat one gram per pound of body weight of protein, okay? I don't want you to do that. So let's say you come to the end of the day and you're like, oh, I'm 40 grams short on my protein. You wouldn't want to eat those 40 grams of protein, which will be like a scoop and a half of whey protein, um, and then break that calorie balance goal. Because then you're, you're putting the cart before the horse. Really. Sure. So that's why we have caloric balances first, then we have uh, macronutrients. Does yep. that make sense, man? It makes, it makes perfect sense. So there's no, we don't want to adhere to the, maybe the, these very strict numbers on our macro side. If we skew in one direction, I don't want to overeat just for the sake of hitting my macros. That's kind of silly, especially if my goal in this instance is to lose weight. Yeah, it's it, and it's understandable that people think that, but um, the caloric balance is the main thing. Similarly, let's say uh, you are going to have two beers, and these beers contain 200 calories each. I'm probably overestimating there, unless they're proper British pints, not unlike your silly American or... We have an international audience, thank you very much. Keep going, keep going. So, let's say that you've got 400 calories and you got that now from um, booze. Um, you're going to need to reduce your either carbs or your fat intake to make up for that. Um, calorie balance comes first. What's the next level? Let's talk, we got a few more levels of the pyramid. Let's kind of blaze through them. Yeah, and we're gonna blaze through them because these are the... Actually, levels four and five are the least important. Um, level three um, is important, but we don't need to go into too much detail with it. This is your micronutrition and your water intake. Um, just make sure that you're eating a variety of fruits. You are not neglecting your vegetables. You're not neglecting your fruits. Um, and really, you're trying to generally eat food that doesn't come in a bottle, tin, or pack it. I know that's a really broad thing to say, but um, if you can do that, if you can have um, micronutritionally dense foods, like your vegetables and your fruits, that's gonna help fill you up. It's also gonna help make sure that your nutrition needs, your micronutrition needs are met. Um, so we're talking about your vitamins and we're talking about your minerals, but we're also talking about the um, zoo nutrients, which are nutrients that we, have trouble measuring and definitely aren't written on packets that come from animal products and then also phytonutrients phytonutrients thank you Ben for saving me there yeah phytonutrients that we get from um, well, non animal plant -based. products foods plant based yeah that's the word yep. thank you Ben yeah so micronutrients um, <laughs> as simple as it sounds this is the don't eat like a jerk uh, level for me if I I can stay within my calorie balance and I can stay within my macros. And that's oftentimes when a lot of people, they just focus on those two, but they're eating gummy bears. They're literally just shoveling protein into their mouth, like whey protein powder just to hit their protein numbers. And it, it kind of seems like a silly diet. Like my mom would certainly shake her finger at me. The next level is where we're talking about eating our fruits and vegetables. My parents always told me to do it. And there's actually some science to back it up. You want to make sure that you have your micronutrients in place. And also we, we haven't mentioned yet, but water intake as well. Uh, if we're drinking lots of water, if we're eating a varied uh, diet with fruits and vegetables and mixing those up, generally we will be able to take care of this level, which is micronutrients. Again, we go into more detail about that in other resources, but I just want you to understand in the higher hierarchy of things, micronutrients has come before. We haven't talked about supplements yet. We haven't talked about timing yet. It comes before those things. So very important to keep in mind if you have the macros and the calories in place, 
get those microbes. If I may just finish on about the water intake, I have mentioned water, really it should be liquid intake. Um, you want to be aiming to, let's say you sleep regular hours, try to aim to pee relatively clear by around noon and then taper your water or your liquid intake down towards the end of the day so that you don't wake up at night. There isn't a fixed guideline on how much you should be drinking um, each day based on um, pounds of body mass. Um, why? Because some people naturally sweat more than others. Some people, um, the seasons differ, meaning that you'll sweat more and some climates are, are hotter and more humid than others. So there isn't just a general guideline that can be given, but those two things, um, if you can aim to be peeing fairly clear before noon and then keep it that way and tape your intake down towards the end of the day so you don't wake up at night, cool beans. Awesome. All right, what's the next level? Next level is uh, nutrient timing. Is it really important for me to crush my whey protein shake within 30 minutes after my workout? Uh -huh. Will I f dissolve? Okay. For you, Ben, yes. <laughs> for everybody else, no. But I want his life to be happy and necessary. It's <laughs> alright, I'll get it in. What you want is for around your training there to be amino acids, which are the building blocks of protein, in your bloodstream at the time that you're training so that muscle mass isn't broken down and so that after your workout you have the necessary building blocks to start the rebuild and recovery process. If you think of it in those terms then you can then things become much simpler. So if you had a meal let's say a mixed medium-sized meal of protein, fats and carbs, three four, five hours prior to training, you're still going to have amino acids in your bloodstream around that time of your training. So you don't really need to worry about it. But let's say it was five hours prior and then you're training and that's an hour, an hour and a half, two hours. Well then that's gonna be now seven hours. Then it might be a good time to have that protein shake after your workout if you're not gonna eat anyway. Sure. So yeah, let, let's break this down and make it really simple. The majority of my clients, when they cut, they're in a fat loss phase, they have two or three meals. So that's a lunch and a dinner, or a breakfast, a lunch and a dinner. If they train early in the morning, I have them take a scoop or two scoops of whey before they're training, just to make sure they've got some amino acids in there. Um, not branch chain amino acids, get a scoop of whey, arguably slightly better. Um, for those that are bulking, I get them to have three meals a day minimum, four, maybe slightly better, but typically three meals a day is what people go with. Again, simply a breakfast, a lunch, and a dinner. If you do that, pretty much any time of the day that you train, as long as you're taking in sufficient protein, um, you'll have what you need. You'll have what you need. I think that's a great way to end it. So there you have it for nutrient timing. It's not nearly as important as I was previously led to believe. Don't want to go catabolic. You know, if you if you go more than an hour without protein, you're going to fall apart. It's it's nonsense. Don't worry about it. Follow the guidelines he just mentioned, and you'll be in a good position. And remember, that still doesn't even matter if we haven't taken care of the bottom of that pyramid. Let's move on to the last tippy top of the pyramid. supplements. Yeah, supplements. They can have an effect. Um, however, if you don't have the other four layers of the pyramid in place, then they're completely irrelevant. So work on those first. Um, the magnitude of the effect that supplements will have, generally speaking, is going to be very, very small. Unless you have a, um, a certain micronutrition <laughs> deficit, thank you Ben, Excuse um, me. in which case it could have an impact on health. Um, but in terms of like supplements that we can take for performance, we're talking about small changes. So you're probably or might be wasting a lot of money on supplements. In terms of the, the pyramid, supplements are the least important tippy top. I mean, I want to take everything that's going to get me more jacked because I don't have much jackitude, right? <laughs> um, however, my supplement spend is, if we discount like whey protein, which is just a more convenient way, it's just a food basically, um, then what do I take? I take a regular multivitamin, I take uh, a 200 milligram caffeine tab, which is super cheap before two workouts a week and my leg days. I take creatine monohydrate, again, super cheap. Um, yeah, and personally, that's it, that's all I take. I mean, okay, vitamin uh, D3 as well. So, 
what does that cost me a month? A lot less than what most people are spending. 30 bucks? So when it comes to the supplements, you don't need to spend a lot. Again, we will, we have another video coming out that goes into a little bit more detail about the dosing and why we take certain things, the few things that we do take. Don't worry about all that right now. The key for you is to remember the pyramid. Click the link in the description below to see an article where we've in detail gone through this pyramid and given you some calculations so that you can determine your calories and your macros and things of that nature. I really appreciate you watching. Give a thumbs up if you like the video. Thumbs down if for whatever reason you didn't like the video, uh, we'll stop making nutrition videos, but thumbs up if you liked it. Hit subscribe if you haven't. And last but not least, be sure to go to wadprep.com. We have a ton of resources in the description below. Click those links and you will get all kinds of great free resources. And I will see you in the next video.